Hi, hello everyone. Uh, so I'm uh, Myung Ter Choi, the one of the organizer. Uh, it's great uh, honor and pleasure to uh, invite Professor uh, Tetsuya Yomo uh, to the eighth self Matter Summer School on Emergence of Life. Uh, professor Yomo is currently a uh, distinguished professor at ECNU, East China Normal University. Uh, but, and uh, until uh, 2016, uh, Professor Yomo was professor at Osaka University, Graduate School of Frontier Bioscience, and also Graduate School of Information Science and Technology. Um, today, he will give a talk on synthesis and experimental evolution of protocell. Um, let's welcome Professor Yomo, please. Hello, everybody. Uh, it is very honor to deliver a talk in this great series of lectures in summer school. And today, I'm going to talk about the construction and the evolution of a process, or which you may call the synthetic cell. And the synthetic cell is a kind of new challenge based on some knowledge from biology, chemistry, and physics. So I guess some of you feel difficult to understand some part of my talk. So please type your questions in the chat box at any time during my talk, and then I would answer them immediately if possible. Is that okay, right? And uh, before going down to the my topic, uh, let me uh, think of what the life is. Of course, although the scientists have no agreement on the definition of life, but I can list up some kind of minimum requirement or characteristic of lives. So vesicles composed by layers and genetic information, metabolic reaction, interaction with the environment, proliferation, and evolution. But I would add one more uh, characteristic, which is that life is never born up from non-living matters, at least at present. So, so this sentence gives rise to the great question of whether or not we can construct synthetic cell from non-living matters. This is a great question, I think. And the research area to construct a simple cell located at the boundary between living and non-living matters is currently divided into two groups. Um, one is synthetic cell project, where the researchers have tried to build cell-like system from the materials of living cells, such as DNA, protein, lipids, and so on. And then these molecules are non-living, of course, just molecules, right? And then the other approach is minimum genome project, where the scientists have synthesized minimum genome in assistance with the computer. So after synthesizing the genome of microplasma in 2010, Recently, in 2016, I believe, they published the minimum genome composed only of 473 essential genes, which is the smallest genome on this planet. So 
but uh, I would skip some of the general introduction in this field as Kate uh, have given the, you the pretty nice uh, introduction, the progress in the last week. So, I would move on to the today's topic, which is the rather bottom-up approach of synthetics for the synthetic cell. One of the aim in this field is to get some insight on the origin of life. So I would briefly explain the scenario so for scientists study. At the beginning, the in the prebiotic soup, uh, the RNA world came up first, where the RNA catalyzed the synthesis of the RNA, self-replication of RNA. And this is still a hypothesis, but no one is ever and no one is ever successful to create self-replicating RNA. And after RNA ball, the next is hypercycle. All of the major players like uh, DNA or protein or maybe RNA constitute kind of network with each component catalyzed the synthesis of each other. And at a certain point, lipid vesco here must have been involved. And just before the real cellular life is originated, there must have been a simple assembly of all components like this, which is located just between at between uh, living and non-living models. So this is sort of a target for the bottom-up approach for the synthetic cell. And after this, of course, biological evolution started in order to construct com more complex system and the difference between the biological evolution from chemical evolution is that the cycle of mutation and selection in order to change the sort of the kinetic parameters between the molecules or the action rate. Whereas in most of the uh, case for the chemical evolution, kinetic parameters in dynamics are given by the phys physical chemical laws. So the molecule are self-assembled to the, into the network with fixed chemical uh, kinetic parameters. So the question for the synthetic uh, cell project is whether or not simple assembly of the molecules, non living virus, constitute and even evolve lifelike complex network? This is a question that I would like to address rather today. And uh, this is sort of the ground design of our synthetic cell. And all the component for the RNA replication and other metabolic reaction are encapsulated into the vesicle surrounded by phospholipid, phospholipid by layer, which we call the liposome. And the genetic material for our synthetic cell or prot cell is not DNA, but RNA because of the RNA world hypothesis. And, though, and the 3D chemical reaction inside 
for the RNA replication, the material and energy uh, used up. Then so then liposome containing the double RNA uh, fused with another liposome or lipid basket containing energy and material to keep the non-equilibrium state. And then division autonomously occurred to return the original state before the next RNA replication. In this way, the membrane growth and the nutrient feeding occurred to constitute this kind of recursive cycle where the lipid vascular ready for the next cycle become double in number, this one and this one. And uh, this is just um, how we prepare the lipid vascular or liposome. So aqueous drop in oil or emulsion uh, were prepared and then the water droplet went down by the centrifuge through the lipid monolayer placed at the water, water boundary to produce the basco surrounded by the lipid by layer. And the resultant Bascode are mostly unilamular, as you see, and but quite heterogeneous in size and shape. So, so we analyze a lot of pictures to get the distribution of the lipid vascular or liposome in size and shape, just like this. And by taking the logarithmic scale of the frequency, as you see here, uh, we obtain the free energy landscape, should free energy landscape, where the deepest point here correspond to the, the most popular state in size and shape, which is a spherical uh, you know, form. And the depict the shoot potential was very shallow and consistent with the standard theory or model of the repeat vesicle, implying that the this shallow potential or initial heterogeneity in size and shape just came from inherent physical nature of this kind of soft vesicle. And now this is sort of the top view of the shoot free energy landscape estimated by the observation of the millions of the repeat vesicle. And then now you can you see the dynamics of a single vesicle to follow the, the shallow potential to shift the spherical hole from spherical home to the oval shape. And uh, all of a sudden, please look at this picture. Uh, they will take, uh, they divide it into the two, just like this. So this type of the stochastic instability or shadow potential allowed the most important shape change, division, or in another word, the lipid molecule might have been chosen for the origin of life because it uh, self 
its self-assembled structure is soft enough for the morphological change. So the bitter. And the next, I would show the electrofusion and the polymer driven division. First, that we put the electric pulse for the fusion. And the fused uh, liposome contained macromolecules like polyethylene and glycol or dextran or something like that. And because of the crowding effect by the macromolecule inside, the liposome uh, take the autonomous division as you see in this video. So here the electric fusion and then, and then we'll, they will take the around 10 seconds before the autonomous division, just like this. So fusion, division, fusion, division. So we can repeat this cycle many times. So what is the driving force for the autonomous division? As I mentioned, we encapsulate polyethylene glycol or PZ or dextran into the liposome. And as you see, the center of the macromolecule uh, cannot enter the body of the green like this which we call the depletion volume. And uh, by comparing comparison between the two states, this one and this one, division, if it occurred, decrease depletion volume due to the increase in the curvature. So on the other hand, that the volume of the right hand, light blue here, where the macromolecule are able to move freely, increase through the division from here to the here. So the free energy or entropy for the macromolecule favor the division. This is sort of the trick of the uh, the autonomous division. Or oh, I have a question, maybe. So maybe I can. So the question is how can I, can I estimate or determine the free energy landscape of the lipid vesicle, right? And then the answer is that the a little complicated, but uh, we took the millions of the uh, the BESCO, we took the picture of the millions of the BESCO and they counted just and they analyze it. And then so we can get the frequency, frequency uh, or distribution in size and shape or a lot of the, you know, by the parameter. And then, and then of course, that the frequency is related to the uh, free energy, right? If you can take the logarithmic scale, minus logarithmic scale, right? So this is how basically how we estimate sort of should free energy landscape. It is not completely equilibrium, but uh, you know, it's quite close to the you know, uh, you know, in time, in the period, time, in the time period of one or two hours, it is almost equivalent. But it gradually, the condition is gradually change in 
to in time scale of two uh, two days or something. So we assume that it's maybe close to the you know equilibrium. Then we take the should uh, free energy landscape. That's how we we did, and then you can. You can go to the, this paper if you want uh, to read the, some kind of detail. Is that OK? All right. So then, So next, uh, I would explain the free show method for the fusion, which is a little mild as compared to the electric pulse, as I explained in the previous picture. So the, now I we prepare the two kinds of the liposome. One containing the green fluorescence and the other with red fluorescent. And we just mix them and then froze the sample quickly in the liquid nitrogen. And they saw it gradually at the room temperature. Then sample was subjected to the fax machine, fluorescence advanced solder, uh, where the each vesicle or lip liposome was hit by hit by the laser here to give rise the fluorescence, which was detected by the CCD cam camera. So here, I just each dot corresponds to the each information for each vesicle, and. Uh, before the freeze and so method, the liposome, this liposome showed only green fluorescence, as you see here. While the, the other showed the red fluorescence, this one. But as you see here, after freeze and so, the most of the liposome showed both colors, green and red indicating that very high efficiency of the fusion. So the then free soul method was applied to the RNA replication. So we prepared the two liposome, one contained RNA molecules and the other contained the mono mononucleotide and other materials and the replication and so on. And after centrifugation to make a physical contact, just like this, uh, we made the freeze and salt to make a fusion and the autonomous division before the RNA replication. And then through the fax analysis, as you see here, about half of the liposome showed the positive signal of the RNA replication after one hour. And then also on your right, you can see the signal of the RNA replication appeared only in the lipid vesicle, indicating that fusion occurred in order to supply the nutrient for the RNA replication. So this is a, just a uh, 10 cycle of the duplication, fusion, division to confirm sort of the sustainability of the proliferation of the liposome 
with RNA in this recursive cycle. So after RNA reaction inside, we mix the RNA lipid vesicle or liposome with nutrient vesicle at the ratio of one to one and made freeze and so to make a fusion division. And the resultant uh, uh, lipid vesicle was diluted by 50% to come back to the original state. So we just repeat this uh, cycle 10 times. And uh, first, I would say that the size distribution of the liposome here after fusion division did not change in its shape through the, these 10 cycle. So this is sort of a surprise for me. Uh, taking into account that the significant fraction of the liposome took the fusion process, as I explained in the previous picture, this no shape change in this distribution implied that the liposome population with fusion did sort of the steady state with division. If no division occurred, distribution should have moved in the right hand side on the, in the right direction. And on your right, the is the time cones in number of the liposome containing the significant amount of the RNA or replicated RNA. So at the beginning, of course, most of the liposome did not contain detectable amount of the RNA molecule. But after RNA replication, the population of the RNA liposome increased up to the 30%, followed by the decrease through the dilution and the small rupture. And after five repeats of this cycle, zigzag, zigzag, as shown with this red uh, line, the population of the RNA liposome which sort of zigzag type of steady state where the RNA replication was balanced with division and a little rupture. So the sustainability of the proliferation with, of the liposome with RNA replication was confirmed where the liposome uh, after internal reaction went back to the original state through the uh, freeze and so just like a recursive nature of natural cell, as you see here. So after showing that the liposome uh, or lipid vesicle are able to grow in the manner of one, two, four, eight, sixteen, exponentially uh, through the recursive cell cycle, I would do show that the genetic material surrounded by the repeated by layer are uh, also able to grow exponentially. So here, the small RNA. Uh, encapsulated together with ribosome and other factors for the protein synthesis, which we call the pure system. And uh, genetic information encoded on this small RNA produces the 
RNA replicase, or you can call RNA dependent RNA polymerase, an enzyme that replicate original RNA just like this. So here, the genetic information is decoded into the protein for replicating itself. That's the sort of self-replication of genetic information. And then here, what we expected to occur in the micro scale lipid vesicle. So the RNA string in tiny vesicle uh, has to bind to the ribosome and the other factors to correct order to catalyze the polymerization of the amino acid. And here the key, um, synthesized protein bind to the original RNA, as you see soon, in order to duplicate its own genetic information. And all this should go well in the tiny vesicle uh, with diameter of one to the 10 micrometer or something. And then, but the reaction network is more complex as you can imagine with this uh, video. This is very complicated, right? So the action replication cycle here and the protein synthesis here and the tRNA recycling here and the energy supplement unit is here. So more than 100 different kinds of macromolecules and more than 5,000 chemical reaction are required to complete single cycle of replication without failure. So this is sort of a tough job, I think. And if you are a good chemist or chemical engineer, you'd like to make the, this type of large vessel with tight control for each reaction to eliminate the byproduct accumulation and optimize the efficiency. But for the study of the on the synthetic cell or for the origin of life, you can't do it, right? So the real question here was whether or not just simple mixture of the macromolecules constitute functional complex network as written here. And uh, this is sort of the same reaction scheme as I explained before. The original RNA produce the original RNA here produce the uh, replicates, which in turn bind to the original RNA plus strand to produce the minus strand. And uh, which bind to the replicates again to reproduce plus strand. So this is sort of simple molecular biology. And the minus strand encode another enzyme which catalyzes the synthesis of the green fluorescence. So as you see in this video, the green fluorescence increase within an hour, indicating that replication of genetic information in liposol. And then we just confirm that all components we encapsulate in a simple manner in tiny space 
work together in a coordinate manner. That was a little surprise. So next question is whether or not the RNA replication site system, which is just chemical network, can evolve in the lifelike manner or not. So here, what we hear, lifelike manner means that uh, just bringing the mutation. Oh, I have a question. Uh, question is, I had the question, which is in RNA, translation take place both on the plus and the minus run? Yes, on the plus run, on the plus run, the, uh, the information is translated into the replicates. And the minus strand, the genetic information translated beta galactosidase, which catalyzes the production of the green fluorescence. So question is yes. So the, where, where am I? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So then, so here, what the lifelike manner means, just bringing the mutation on their own and take the advantage of the natural uh, selection. So to do so, the, the compartment should be duplicated quickly. But as I explained previously, fusion division at this moment is still not first enough to see the evolution dynamics. So we made a little trick. So we replace uh, the outer leaf of the liposome with oil to with oil to make an emulsion. And then after replication of the genetic information, as you see here, we add the other emulsion containing our water in droplet, uh, containing the food and energy and to make the what this water droplet fuse just like this and and then doubled like this before the whole solution was divided into two to return the original state so in this recursive way of the reproduction allow the gene to grow exponentially like a natural cell. So how to do that? So the emulsion is quite easy as you know. So after self uh, replication of the RNA. So here the RNA produce protein, produce, produce protein, replicate RNA, so autocatalytic network here. After this reaction in the uh, emulsion, we took the article of the droplet was taken out and inoculated to the fresh media as if it were daily passage of cell culture. And after fusion division by just vortexing, we prepare the population for the next RNA replication. 
So as you see here on your right, the exponential growth of RNA molecule and the dilution, growth, dilution, growth, dilution, zigzag, 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 dynamics. And what makes the unique, what makes this reaction unique here from other biochemical reaction network is that the replicates here produced from the RNA put the mutation, its own genetic information, just like this. So if good mutation appear, it can propagate into the population through the natural selection. This is a little bit different from the normal biochemical reaction network. And uh, in fact, that we observed network evolve to duplicate 34 power one hour at the end of the experimental revolution. So 100 times acceleration in this uh, experimental revolution. Point for the success. This successful experimental revolution was micro scale compartmentalization, as you see here. When we conducted the same reaction network in the bulk test tube, just in Eppendorf, the system quickly declined, as you see, with this orange triangle. As the all muted gene were equally amplified the, by the total activity of total activity of enzyme in the bulk test tube, there is no selection pressure among the RNA molecules, right? So they just the uh, accumulate deleterious mutation over the generation. And then so compartmentalization of the RNA molecule was quite essential for natural selection or down evolution. Let me repeat the same thing. Uh, this is because important. So, genetic molecule must be compartmentalized to be few in number in the compartment. So let's, uh, let me start think of the mutual catalytic network uh, where the RNA produce the protein, protein produce RNA. So in this case, more of the RNA molecule accumulated, more of the protein produced by spots. So therefore, the chemical network preferred the large number of the gene in terms of the biochemistry or chemistry, just like this, just because the mutual catalytic network, right? But uh, this caused a lot of problem for the evolution. So when the mutation happen on the gene of, of the large number, diversity between or among the vesicles is getting smaller because the fitness contribution for each mutation is average out in the same compartment. So small diversity prohibit the evolution from the improving the genetic information, but rather accumulated the bad mutation. On the other hand, here the, when the mutation happened on the gene with small number, for example, the single copy, of the gene on your left, 
the mutated gene will become a majority if it produces high activity. So the large diversity in property directly came from the genetic uh, diversity leading to the evolvable system. In another word, in this case, that the link between the genotype, phenotype, or genetic information and the property is established well for this system. That's a kind of a key for the power sort of the biological evolution, though what I'm, I'm talking about chemical or biochemical system. And uh, once you accept it, that the rule that the genetic molecules should be low in number in a single vesicle, you will see the smaller is better than better so when we started with the constant number of the RNA in general, the RNA molecule quickly proliferated into in the four femtoliter small size of the liposome because the synthesized replicase or enzyme is confined into the tiny region leading the high concentration of the enzyme, whereas in the volume of the only one order larger in diameter, 4,000 femtoliter, the replicates diffuse around and hardly meet, meet the, its own genetic information for the amplification or proliferation. So the smaller best will accelerate the RNA replication. So cell size, you can't make the big size of the cell or something. And, uh, but uh, once you gain the benefit for the small size, you have to pay the cost. So here we encapsulate identical plasmid in uh, encoding yellow fluorescence protein, YFP, and blue fluorescence protein, BFP, into the uh, natural cell, E. coli, and artificial cell or synthetic cell, or lipid vesicle, as I, you know, I, so far, I explained. And the lipid vesicle produce the yellow fluorescent protein here uh, of the 10 to the fourth molecule on average, as you see here, with 0 0.5 times 10 to the fourth of the blue fluorescence protein on the y-axis. But I would emphasize that the scattering of the dots correspond to the information of each vesicle. So as you see that the smaller some uh, liposomal vesicle produce 10 times more of the protein than the other, right? Highly distributed in blue fluorescence, uh, BFP or YFP boss. But, and uh, when it comes to the natural cell, the average protein synthesis was a little bit different from the one in the lipid vesicle, but the scattering, you know, or of the dots is equivalent to those of the artificial cell model. 
So, you know, scattering here and it's scattering here is it's sort of the same level, right? So the what is the origin of this stochasticity or scattering of the protein synthesis? You know, you, you can, if they are machine-like systems, natural cell or PESCO, you know, they should, they are in the same condition, they have the same gene, so they should produce the same number of the protein, right? But actually, even though they have uh, in the same condition, but a lot of the scattering or a stochastic variation, what you may call the fluctuation. So as you know, that when we go down to the scale of the single molecule, for example, then you will see the brown emotion, stochastic reaction event by molecular collision. That's obvious, very stochastic. And also, when we go up the scale of a test tube, then you will see the deterministic or reproducible reaction dynamics. So you can, yeah, of course, that there are some error if you do this triplicated of the reaction, you know, but the 10. 0.1% uh, error or something, which may come from the U.S. hand, <laughs> but, you know, the reaction is mostly the deterministic in that sense. But although I skipped the detail analysis on this, these data, but uh, this fluctuation or scattering that you see here inevitably came from the smallness of the natural and the artificial compartment. In other words, that the cell are much more fluctuating system because of its own small size than, as, than you can imagine as molecular machine in the textbook. You know, there are lots of the literature on this matter, you know, but, uh, you know, the protocell or synthetic cell have the same nature in terms of the fluctuation. That definitely proves that the stochasticity just come from the small size, you know, they have, when they're, Divided when they when they encapsulate the nutrient, you know, there's the number is around 100 or some molecules 10 or something. So there are a bunch of the fluctuation, and then so it's uh, between the level of the single molecule and uh, test tube. So micro size is just like this. So it's in another word that it's in my I in my personal opinion, it's quite difficult to make fancy control on this size, you know, rather we should use this kind of flexibility for the adaptation or something like that. That's my personal opinion. And then moving back to the experimental evolution of the RNA replication. Next, what we did is sequencing of the RNA over the generation. And to draw the phylogeny of the evolving, uh, exponentially evolving chemical system. And then we just pick up the fulcrum uh to see the 
the how they change in kinetics. At the beginning, zero round, round 32, round 80, round 128. And then, as expected, then they evolve to increase the replication fold by two order magnitude from in the course of the evolution from zero round to the 128 round. It's just because down your evolution. It's not a big surprise. But the non-obvious is that at the beginning of the evolution, we found that amplified the RNA mostly formed double strand home like this, which is a dead end product for the translation. But at the end of the experimental evolution, it double strand formation was suppressed. So that was lucky. And furthermore, that the we found that the small parasitic RNA emerge at the beginning of the at the beginning by tiration mutation, um, the RNA uh, replicates gene on the original RNA and it propagates 10 times faster than the original RNA because it's 10 times shorter. The original RNA is 2,200 base, but the parasite is 200. And then so it stole the replicates produced from the original RNA. So they are very parasitic in a sense. And uh, over the generation, the network, or, you know, naturally evolved the suppress this parasite in enhancing the its own application, as you see here. So to figure out how the network change kinetic parameters or the action rate constant. We did lots of the kinetic analysis, and but I'm not going to the detail, but found that at the beginning of the evolution, uh, parasite dominate the flux of the reaction of work, but by improving single strand, uh, RNA production rate and the replication rate and the main flags shifted to the amplification of the germ. And at the end, um, oops, at the end, uh, They uh, they improved the affinity between the minus strand and enzyme to produce more of the plus strand. So so it showed that the our original design for the complicated network unfortunately produce this short circuit are parasite or double strand, but the evolution is quite smarter than me, just like this. Simple mutual catalytic network. And the um, system is able to go beyond evolution optimization or simplification. So when we 
relax the condition for the survival by changing reaction period from one hour to the five hours and the dilution rate from 34 to the five fold, then system showed solved oscillation. So the each little black curve corresponds to the temporal change of in concentration of the genome here or a parasite. So blue is genome and red is parasite. So started with the final genome sequence in the previous evolution, parasite dominate again after two cycles, as you see here. And uh, because of the domination of the parasite, the genome did not grow anymore. And they simply declined by the five times dilution, as you see here. And the parasite also declined because of lack of the enzyme produced the original genome. Yet, when the parasite went below the one molecule per droplet, the genome start recovering and entering and entering next cycle of the fancy oscillation. This is just because the significant fraction of the compartment have was free from the parasite according to the Poissonian distribution. The average is zero. Uh, average is one. It means that the 30 percent or 40 percent is zero of the parasite molecule, right? So there is free space for the genome amplification. And uh, in the latter stage, the genome sometimes went beyond the parasite concentration, which seems the resistance to the parasite. And actually, we found that uh, lots of the mutation, which made the replicates evolve to lower the affinity to the parasite. And in addition, the same daily passage experiment was carried out in the bulk solution where the genome and the parasite quickly went down to the lower limit of the detection without oscillation. So the micro compact, it is the words, the micro compartment, micro compartmentalization that led to the oscillation dynamics and evolution. Now I would be showed some progress in this field. So the after our synthetic cell with RNA replication, Professor Daniel group uh, in Netherlands published a synthetic cell with DNA replication. So they encapsulate the double strand DNA here, encoding the 526 phase DNA polymerase and the other factors. Uh, for DNA replication. These two genes were expressed in the assistance of the pure as in our synthetic cell. And the two other purified factors are essential for the DNA replication are externally added for the DNA replication. And as you see on your right that the green fluorescent dye stick to the aggregation of amplified DNA. As you see here, or here. Uh, with the lipid vesicle stain with the red fluorescence. And unfortunately, the, this green dye 
also stick to the membrane. So it's a bit difficult to see the amp only the amplified DNA in this picture. So they scan the four best best goals. He one, two, three, four for the green dots in order to show the green fluorescence of the amplified DNA surrounded the, by the deep membrane uh, with red, uh, as you see, with spike of the red fluorescence. So this spike and in between the spike, there are green fluorescence, as you see here. And of course, without DMDP, which is the material for the DNA. The bottom picture, there is no increase in green fluorescence between the, with, between the red fluorescence peak. So these results indicate that the DNA, DNA can be replicated in liposome. And uh, also, I would say that the application of large DNA, circular DNA in test tube. And you might know that the duplication of DNA, DNA by the polymerase from the virus as shown in the previous picture has sort of the limitation in size for in size or length of so the replicating replicable DNA fragment. So in order to encode many genes, Professor Suetsubu in Japan and his colleague reconstituted to the replication cycle reaction called RCR in test tube from the all protein components listed here necessary for the chromosome, E. coli chromosome replication. That was a tough job, I believe. And on your right, that the plasmid with all the lesion of the E. coli exponentially grow up to the 10 to the fourth, uh, fifth fold in only two hours. That's very quick, quick replication, more than E. coli, I think. And uh, this is a uh, great progress in the field of a synthetic cell and the minimum general project, I believe. And, uh, oh, by the way, that the, can you stop the recording for the next few pictures? Can you do that? Oh, yes, I'll ask, ask uh, Kim, uh, Kim Hemi Sanseng Nguyen. Uh, 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 currently, uh, Professor Yomo is asking, not recording this part. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the... After showing the, the some kind of result as a basic science, I would add the one of the possible application of the prot cell or synthetic cell. As you see here, some of the membrane protein, if not all, are expressed on the me membrane of the prot cell lipid fiber layer, implying that the synthetic cell could communicate with outer environment or evolved membrane protein. So here is one of the example of the in the application of the synthetic cell. So directed evolution of the membrane protein. So we employed hemolysis as a test case. First, we prepared the randomly mutated gene of the hemolysis here. And the each gene are encapsulated into the 
little bit basco. And then each gene is expressed in the monomer of the, the protein to constitute the hemorrhizing like this. And then we add the fluorescent dye to measure the hemorrhizing activity where the greener is higher activity of the hemorrhizing, as you see here. And then so we are the we apply the liposome to the fax machine again with each liposome was shotted by the laser to give a nice green fluorescence to the CCD camera before selecting the greenest uh, liposome. And then from the uh, we extracted the gene from the greenest the liposome and uh, with the better ac activity of the hemorrhaging was subjected and was subjected again to the mutagenesis to prepare the library of the next round. So mut mutation, selection, mutation, selection, we repeated this cycle in 20 times, 20 times and found that the, the activity of the hemorrhizing above by more than one order magnitude together with some mutation as you see here. So it is clear that the, this liposome display is feasible for the directed meat evolution of the membrane protein. That's one of the applications of the synthetic cell, I think. So time has come. Uh, so Finally, let me summarize what I explained today. So we show the simple assembly of the biomolecules work and even evolve for the gene replication network composed of more than 5,000 reaction system without it making a traffic jam. So, and the map, Microcompartmentalization was essential to make the genetic molecule low in number in, for down evolution. This rule is related to the upper size limit of, for the cell. So we, if we design the new cellular life, what size would, would you like to see? Um, so let's think about the lipid vesicle here uh, with a diameter of 10 micrometer, where the single molecules produce a thousand protein molecules. So the concentration is, uh, of the protein is about one nanomole, which is equivalent to the dissociation constant of the well evolved DNA binding protein. So it means that the lipid vesicle beyond this size was too big to allow the synthesized protein to meet and duplicate its own genetic material. So primordial cell or synthetic cell should be smaller than this, I think. And the chemical um, network when it's compartmentalized evolved to suppress the double strand formation or parasite beyond our design. Furthermore, it showed that sort of the oscillation implying that arms race between the host and the parasite at present made it back even before the cellular lives were well established.
or putting it the other way around, that the synthetic cell we, we made is rich enough to be infected by the parasite like a natural cell. And then now we are trying to develop the synthetic cell with a DNA genome and coding managing essential for sustaining the life and the real synthetic cell. Once if completely developed, the we many related research field will open, I think, which is uh, for younger uh, students like you. And uh, I believe that the, I briefly introduced one of the application with Synthetic Excel, but uh, more will come after filling the gap between no living and the living martyr in the field of synthetic cell. And uh, finally, I would acknowledge the people for the great effort to make the scientific progress I present today. Thank you for your kind attention. That's all. Thank you very much for your wonderful talk. Um, for audience, uh, please, yeah, it's time for Q and A. So, uh, Professor Yomo, I'm here to back. I have one question. Yes, uh, it was a very nice talk. Uh, in your talk, you talks about the vesicle splitting and lowering of free energy uh, through uh, the depletion interaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if you split the, the vesicle, actually surface energy cost and bending energy cost also increasing a lot. So is there any model or you calculated or? Is there... Yes, we, you are talking about this, right? Yes, yes. Yes, we carefully calculate the bending energy, uh, you know, free energy we can gain, okay. uh, we can reduce from the, this macromolecule. And then it's very close because the, as you know, that the vesicle is, if it's large, very soft, you know, yes, in I know. terms of yeah. the bending or, uh, you know. So the, this small effect from the crowding Macro uh, molecule crowding is sort of the enough to bring the vesicle into the division. So th that's what, yeah. That yeah. means the concentration of uh, you you use the ethylene glycol molecule inside. So concentration effect is uh, so if you change the concentration, that effect also change. Is that yes yes please. yes and then to bring the enough. Uh, free energy reduction, we need the around 20 or 30% of the macromolecule in body of, you know. So they, it's very high. And the natural cell, when it comes to the natural cell, the macromolecule concentration inside the cell is also very high. So it's almost same level. You know, of course, that natural cell use the sort of the mechanical, you know, trick by the, you know, protein like a mean or other fits D or something like that. But, you know, when they are the, in the period of uh, prebiotic error or origin of life, you know, they, I believe that they first use the, this simple division, autonomous division by the macromolecule crowding effect, I think. But uh, of course, there is no way to prove that it occurred in the prebiotic era. Thank you very much. And more, more question? Um, may I ask one question? Yes, please. Hello. Hello, uh, my name is Dr. Kim. Uh, you usually do the freeze and thaw cycle one hour. 
freeze so, and so. Yeah, the, every one hour, that's what we did. So uh, we, yeah, free, freeze and so is takes the, you know, once you freeze, then any time it, period is okay, you know, but we can repeat, you know, freeze right. and so In the experience, uh, five times yeah, a okay. day or something like that. That you carried out in five hour cycle. I cannot understand the, uh, what you, why you did it very well. So could you explain that part again? Five hour uh, cycle experiment. I, I uh, uh, you're, you're talking about the freeze so, right? Uh, no. That you carried out the five hour cycle experiment. Maybe it's not the freeze and thaw cycle, but. Uh, five hours? So uh, you were talking about the. Uh, this one? Uh, later. Yeah, this one. So this what one. did you actually do? Uh, so here the we keep the reaction time for the five hours and how then you, how do you control the reaction time? We just the because of the this all chemical uh, biochemical reaction uh, is active beyond the 30 degrees Celsius. So we just oh. cool down to stop the reaction and then dilute it five times and then restart again. Okay, I see, I see. So why do you have a uh, long cycle of uh, 50 hours? This is a cycle longer than your uh, experimental cycle, like 10 times longer. Uh -huh. So the question is that the, what will happen if we take the longer no, no, no. What I'm asking is that in this graph, I can see something oscillates with a period of 50 hours, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, yes. So yes. that the the reason why this oscillation occurred yeah. is because, let's see. So around 50 hours, as you see here, the parasite concentration per droplet is about one molecule. Okay. So it means that uh, according to the Poissonian distribution, about 30 or 40 percent of the compartment are free from the parasite, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. So those free space is good for the genome amplification. Okay, so you. when they down beyond go down to the average of the one molecule, then genome take the advantage uh -huh. by okay. using the free space. I see, I see, That's I why that is enter the next cycle. I see, I see, I see. So the ten times the to take the uh, like the period is or uh, maybe some concentration that determines that is okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So we will get more case, more question. Uh, Professor Yomo, I uh, I have one question because I didn't understand quite. Uh, so. Your, in your talk, you talk about the size effect, the uh, yeah. volume dependence of RNA replication, and then you mm -hmm. you say the the explanation is uh, fluctuation wise uh, enhanced the fluctuation in smaller vesicle. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if you under, understand correctly. So I, I didn't get uh, it's still vague in the fluctuation explanation. Uh, okay, so let me repeat once again that the so the normally if cell or artificial either 
artificial cell or natural cell uh, cultivated in the same condition, you know, they have, if they have the same gene and the same condition, they should, we expected, according to the textbook, we expected the same number of the protein or, you know, same division plate or even everything should be same if they are machine, right? But at the same time, according to the physics textbook, we'll see that the, a lot of the stochasticity were just fluctuation when we go down to the single molecule, right? Yeah, that's down in evolution or the reaction requiring the collision is quite a stochastic, you know. And then, of course, when we go up to the test tube, everything is, uh, if we measure the uh, reaction rate in the test tube, you know, it's quite a deterministic, right? So, and then microscale of the natural cell or lipid vesicle is sort of the in between the two, you know, stochastic, extremely stochastic and extremely deterministic. So, reason why is because that the, you know, when they divide it or, you know, when they encapsulate the molecules, you know, they require thousands of hundreds of the different molecules, right? And then there are some of the required mo molecules, required molecules is about 10 molecules or something like that. So root square of the average number is level of the fluctuation, right? So in that case, you know, it's just because of, you know, each component have the 20% or 30% of the fluctuation. And then if they required a hundred different kinds of molecules, you can expect that uh, you know a lot of the fluctuation, and uh, this kind of the argument is common between the natural cell and the artificial cell. So we, my age, you know, we have learned that the cell is molecular machine, and uh, many people try to develop the sort of the fancy molecular gadget in it to control the cell, right? But according to the, this data and then uh, data from the other groups, you know, uh, particularly in the field of the single cell analysis, you know, in the last 10 years or 20 years, um, they show that the cell are, natural cell are very fluctuating in terms of the gene expression or replication speed or whatever. So, you know, we, so my, in my personal opinion, we are, we may, we need to change a little bit our image on the cell, you know, and uh, just, not to introduce too tight control fancy gadget, but rather this kind of diversity may be good for adaptation to the environment. So for example, no, I'm, today I'm not going to the biology side, but uh, somehow if the, some condition in, sudden change of the environmental change condition, some cell 
that happen to produce more protein are advantageous so they can survive. But uh, some con at the some condition, the less protein production will bring the advantage. And then without making any change with in, on the genetic material, they can produce diversity, right? Because of the stochastic fluctuation, right? So this is sort of the inherent nature of the small size, which is good, I believe, for the you know adaptation without mutation. Thank you, thank you. Oh, there is one question in chat box. Ah, uh, okay. Intrinsic noise and extrinsic noise is sort of the uh, in extrinsic noise come from the variation uh, in number of the plasmid, and the intrinsic noise here is come from the the variation in uh, the expression level of the blue fluorescent protein over the what you know uh, yellow fluorescent protein. So then, of course, that are any uh, polymerase number of the RNA polymerase is limited in the vesicles. So you know they are sort of the source of the stochasticity for the intrinsic noise. And then of course the plasma number encapsulated in the tiny space is also fractured. So there are extrinsic noise. Okay. Um... Are there more questions? Okay, if not, uh, we may finalize uh, today's lecture by Professor Yomo. Thank you very, very much for your wonderful and very kind explanation. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. And thank you too for your kind attention. And have a safe, wonderful, safe day. Yeah.